Hello and welcome to the Unstoppable Artist Formula. This is Nicole Peterman of Zen Red NYC and here you are learning how to claim your full power as an artist, make great money and attract your perfect audience. So today make sure that you have got your pen, your pencils, maybe some markers or colored pencils, your unstoppable journal or binder because we're going through actual processes live tips and tools and strategies that you can implement right away so that you can truly own your brilliance, find satisfaction, and be in front of an audience you love. It's time for you to be unstoppable. So today is a really special day for me because I've been reunited with a friend that I haven't seen in years. And I'm so excited that she is here today to help you. We have the beautiful Heidi Easley. She is the founder of Texas Art and Soul. And she travels all over the United States sharing her message of art heals through paint parties. She loves to teach others the power of art and how God is the ultimate artist. Paint and praise workshops are perfect for community, hope, encouragement, and lots of fun. Heidi, welcome. Thank you. I'm so happy to be here. I am too. I was just, I was saying before we hit record, um, so the audience knows that Heidi and I went through a mastermind together. And at that time, we were both like, what are you doing? <laughs> Where are we supposed to go with this? <laughs> what? You know, like trying to figure out who we were and like figuring out our place, like how we wanted to be artists in the marketplace and create the most impact and, and to come back together at this time when we we're both like, yeah, we know how we want to be artists in the marketplace. And, and I mean, Heidi, you have helped so, so many to really like come into their bodies and create beautiful work. So I'm so thrilled to have you here and to reconnect in this way. I know, I'm honored to be here and I'm so excited to talk to you and your audience and hopefully help in any way I can. So I know that something that you're really good with helping people with is motivation, which can be like the giant question mark, like, ugh, I'm not feeling it, the muse has left the building, like how do I get back to my art? And so what have you found in your life that has helped you to have unstoppable motivation? You know, it's funny because my husband always jokes. He's like, it doesn't matter how many times people or things knock you down. You're like, you get up faster every time. You know, he always kind of makes that, that joke. And it's funny because, you know, I have failed a lot, like, a lot and I as we all do we all have things that we think are gonna happen and then they don't or things that you know we see you know I'm one of those people that are very optimistic although as I get wiser I start to get a little smarter with my optimism <laughs> however um, you know it's just you know used to when I'd fail and take me a few days to to get the muster back up and now it's almost like as soon as before I even know that it's about to fail I'm already on to like what am I gonna do to self-correct and I think it's part of a, um, it's almost like being consistent in the gym, you know, and um, if you go every day, you know, you might not see results for a little while, but if you keep going and you keep going in six months from now, you're going to see results. So I think that's where I have this, you know, I have this goal. I have this big vision. I have these huge plans for my family and I know what it, what I need to do to get there. So it's almost now as I fail, I know that the faster I get up, the quicker I course correct, the quicker that I adjust those little tweaks that I have to tweak, the, the more I can do that. And I think by having that kind of unstoppable craziness, maybe, I think that motivates others. So the people that I actually mentor in my mentor groups, you know, they, they don't see me all of a sudden, you know, go down for a week and I'm not sure what to do. You know, they see me immediately. Okay, now this is working. And then I help them because you know, I teach paint parties and then I also help people who are teaching paint parties all over the world. And so if I have, you know, a good success thing that just happened, you know, because I'm out there in the field, I'm always like, you know, I'm out there doing it too and showing you what is working immediately. So if I have something that, you know, fell flat, I'll be in that group on a live immediately saying, okay, do not do this. <laughs> this is not good. And it's okay that it happened, but don't do it. I don't want you to do what I did. And I think that's motivating to just be real with them and to show them like things happen sometimes and it's okay. 
you, you still keep moving on. You might have a party where six people showed up and then the next week you have 85. It doesn't mean that you're, you know, a loser. It just means there was something that we did wrong with our marketing. And so I'm all about just teaching them those things and trying to help them the best I can. And I think through my craziness, I am motivating <laughs> to some extent. <laughs> So for those that are kind of listening to you right now and going, God, but I, how do I tap into that for myself? Like, what are some things that you help your clients to really tap into what is already alive in them that helps them to get back up after the disappointment? You know, I think a lot of times that we think motivation is just going to, you know, keep coming and keep coming. And I think we have to remember first off why we're doing it. You know, what's the purpose? Why are we doing this? And then also we just have to remember like, sometimes it's a matter of just tweaking a few things. I think we make business too hard and too confusing sometimes. When we make it so confusing that the customer doesn't even know what we're offering yes. because we thought we had to like fancy it up or make it into this big show then the customer is so confused that they can't do anything. So I spend a lot of my time telling the people that I mentor, no, like you don't even need to worry about that. Take that off your plate. Take, and when you, whenever it gets down to the bare bones, you know, I'm all about like a profit every party. I always tell them profit every party. And so when you get down to the bare bones of things, it's motivating because you don't have 50 to-do lists anymore. You know, you take off all of the crap that doesn't matter and then mm. you just do the things that matter and then they make money and then they're like, oh my gosh, I just made $450 in two hours. I'm motivated. I'm going to do that again, you know, because we've taken away all the little nonsense that doesn't matter. And um, what I've learned, especially helping other women is that, we get stuck on the smallest things and I'm included. You know, we, I remember picking out logos for my aprons years ago and the apron lady was like, you just need to make a decision. Like, come on already, you know? And, and it was just this thing, like, what if I made the decision and what if I made the wrong decision? Yeah. I just did a paint party in Florida, you know, and I didn't even bring aprons. So did that decision even matter? No, it did not matter. And so the other day we had a discussion and the girls were talking about door prizes. And what if we give, you know, one, you know, $5 off if somebody comes or, you know, all of this nonsense. And I'm like, I don't even know what you're offering. You know, I love you guys, but it's so confusing. I don't even know how to play the rules of that game. <laughs> and so again, taking all of that nonsense away to where you can just focus on making the money and serving the people that you're, you know, they're before you, you know, it's about helping them. So I think that alone brings motivation. I know that was a long winded story. So I apologize. I think that's so helpful because what I'm really hearing that are two things. The first, like know what to take off your plate. And I hear that you're really good at helping your clients to be like this actually like take this off. So there isn't this energy on it and really be clear on what you're offering. So, you know, we have, we have artists that are musicians, writers, uh, visual artists here. And it's like, be clear on what you're actually offering and make it clear for the customer. So they know what they're getting, like take away all that other stuff for a minute. If indeed your, your intention is to increase your income, then place it there, but be clear. So I love that. It's kind of like, all right, if something didn't work out, you're not a bad person, but take a look at your marketing. And if you're not sure, ask someone for help that knows marketing inside and out that can be like, I'm confused. I'm, I'm not even, what, what, are you, what are you offering? <laughs> yes, I think we get in our own bubble of just our people and we're like, well, they know me, they know what I do. So I let them look at it. Whenever you ask just like a random person that might come to your party or buy whatever you're selling that, you know, they're like, I don't even get it. You know? So I think sometimes we are so close to the project that we can't see what we're doing wrong. And it's just those few tweaks. I mean, marketing is 90% of pretty much every business. <laughs> if you don't have marketing, you do not have a business. Right. Let that sink in, everybody. <laughs> it's scary, oh, but it's true. 
<laughs> okay, so Heidi, I know you have got a super creative, really fun and powerful exercise to take us all through. So I'm all ready. I'm ready for you. Bring it on. Okay, so I am going to take you through and kind of, okay, so these are little, um, little canvases. Can you see that? Mm hmm Okay, so basically what I've done, and I do this with workshops, so everybody's turns out a little different. And I use, so it basically anybody can do that. But what it's doing is it's releasing your old story. So we all have an old story. You know, I went from bankruptcy to business owner before the age of 30, and we lost everything. And I found myself um, months later trying to start a surfboard business. And when I mean surfboard, decorative surfboards, I was literally painting wooden surfboards and I went to try to sell these wooden surfboards and nobody was buying them and so here I am before I'm 30 I'm bankrupt I rubbed my family in to try to you know start this new business that I thought was going to be a smashing success <laughs> and I'm sitting there and nobody's buying my stuff and and I remember you know my mother-in-law looking at me and she said come on, Heidi, we got to take a break because she knew I was just devastated. And so we walk across the street to Buffalo Wild Wings and we're sitting there and it was in Panama City Beach and I lived there for 10 years and we were sitting at the bar at Buffalo Wild Wings and I am just like one drink in. I'm like, what am I going to do? You know, in your 20s, you don't realize there's plan B, plan C, plan D. You don't know that then. Yeah. At that time in my life, there was a plan A and a plan B and both sucked and I was done for, right? Yeah. And so another drink in, I'm like, this is awful. What am I going to do? Like, really, you know, I have a toddler. I have a you know, daughter. I've had to move out of our house that we had painted all Tinkerbell. Her name's Pixie. And I had murals done. I mean, we had everything set up for her whole life. Like, I had visioned her doing homework in the little nook we created. I mean, everything was ready and everything was taken away. And so, um, so I'm at the bar and I'm just, you know, drinking and trying to plan the next thing. And then a phone call changes everything. My husband calls and he says, Heidi, get over here. And he was man in the little booth at the little surfboard thing. And he said, get over here. We have orders. And I was like, what? You're lying. And he's like, no, get over here. We have orders. And so I look at my mother-in-law and she's like, go, go, go. Cause of course I ain't got no money to pay for the tab, you know? So she pays for the tab and I walk across the street tipsily. And this is the moment that changed everything. My husband, we had these paper tickets, you know, with all the orders and he had a stack and he was like looking at me, holding these tickets. And he said, Heidi, get to painting, like start painting now. And I was like, what? And it was this moment where I was like flat, flat, flat on my face. I mean, I was so depressed, isolated, you know, felt ashamed, all of this. And it was like God like scooped me up off of that concrete and catapulted me up and said, not only are you going to be okay, Heidi, but you're going to be okay doing what you love, which is painting, which I've done since I was 14. And so I just, from that moment, I had this unshakable confidence that like, it's okay. Anything can happen. Anything can turn on a dime. And we went on to sell over a thousand hand painted surfboards in just two months, which meant this person who took a year to paint that purple thing back there. I used to be the slowest painter in history. I knew I had to learn to paint fast because every $20 surfboard was money towards my family's future, was cash in our hands to make everything right. So yeah, we went on to sell over a thousand surfboards. I would paint in you know, my car if it was raining. I would paint up until two or three in the morning just to get the orders done. And it just became this, like, this feeling of, oh my gosh, it's all gonna be okay. Like my 20 somethings are not destroyed. <laughs> I don't have to live in this. And so I created this kind of story because we all have a story whether it's battling, you know, weight loss or um, a divorce or health stuff. I mean, God knows I've had my own health troubles and my family's had so many health troubles. And um, whatever that story is, you can change it through this. And then this becomes the reminder of what you can use moving forward. So when I look at this, I don't see all of my failures anymore. I see all the excitement. So what I want you to do is, okay, so if you have a canvas, you just grab a canvas and some acrylic paints. And then I want you to, 
at Michael's or Hobby Lobby, they have these fun little frames. They're just like little cardboard frames, or you can draw those on if you want. This is a very like not official art project, but it's really fun. I have bubble wrap. This is my go-to for all things painting. That's bubble wrap. And um, so you just like dip and then dip. It's really fun. And then of course, glitter glue. You cannot go anywhere without glitter. Come on now. Right, you gotta have glitter glue. And then stencils. So basically you just paint a base and then you do your stenciling and your um, bubble wrap and stuff like that on there. And then you can paint your frames and glue them on there. And then you just leave this to dry. So while this is drying, what I like to do, and this is how I walk people, if you're ever, if you're, if you do paint parties or workshops with people, this is a very healing exercise because it's very simple. Nobody has to be an artist to do this, but the results are really, really great. So I like to tell people to think about like, what story are you constantly telling yourself right now that every day you wake up and whether it's, you know, you know, um, my weight, I'm not where I am in my weight. What story is that? Like, it, again, it does not matter. Or maybe you've totally screwed up like me with the finances, like, and lost everything. So my old story was, and I'm going to write it down. I just want you to take a piece of paper or a cardstock, and you're going to write down old story, new story, and then do a line in between. So, and I'm going to give you some examples of what I wrote. Okay. So old story, I was isolated. And kind of by choice, because I was so embarrassed. Um, isolated, embarrassed. So think about your story, and you can write yours in as well. Um, I was ashamed. I wouldn't tell my friends what happened, even though I had to change out my car three times in one year. I was like, I just want a new car. Oh, I just want a new car. I didn't want to tell them I was getting my car repoed every time, because that was embarrassing, right? Um, looking back, they had to have known something was up. Again, in your 20s, <laughs> we're kind of naive. <laughs> um, ashamed, embarrassed, isolated, depressed. I was really depressed. The reason I started painting those little surfboards is because art, I didn't realize it at the time, but art was healing to me. You know, me painting on a big wall, or, you know, which I couldn't do in an apartment that I was living in at the time, but me painting is healing. And so for me to just like get out those surfboards and paint them, and then I took them to the art, the school I was working at. I was an art teacher and the kids went nuts. And that's what spiraled the whole thing of like, oh, after a hundred kids said that, I was like, maybe I could sell these. Yeah. And that's what actually started the surfboard business was all of those little kids saying, put my name on it. I got to have one. And um, so depressed. So I had taken those surfboards to paint on. And um, I was ashamed. I was embarrassed. I was isolated. I was alone. Um, I felt like I was done. Have y'all ever had that feeling? Like life's too hard and I'm done. Mm. Like checking out almost. Um, felt like I was done. I felt like um, there was hopelessness, hopelessness for sure. Um, I had this feeling of, you know, here I am thinking like I'd, I'd done the corporate thing. I'd, became an art teacher. I, you know, my husband had his job of his dreams. And then when he lost it and our house skyrocketed, I'm like, that's it. Like we're done. We're in our twenties and we're done. And I just had that feeling of like, it can't get any better. Um, so write down what yours are. Okay. And then I want you to think about whether you're going through your story right now, which everybody has a new story they're constantly going through. Um, or there's this big impactful story like this one that I shared with you. Um, again, this, this one impactful story. And again, I didn't come to this right after I had the story. It was many, many years later that now I see it and I almost smile because I went bankrupt. And I know that sounds so crazy. But the reason why is because, and I'm going to read you what I wrote in here. And then I'm going to read you my new story. So I wrote in here, isolated, alone, sad, depressed, forgotten, and um, guilty, ashamed, broke, no way out, tired, unrespected, dark, and unloved. And then I have stuck, put in bold, stuck. I just felt stuck. Mm -hmm. And I didn't, I didn't know what to do. And then now when I, and again, I smile when I think about this, because I know God totally changed my path for a reason. Totally changed it in that moment when I didn't know why, um, because now I 
in that moment, even looking back, I see God's love. I see his grace. I see success. I see excitement. I see love. I see adventure. I mean, I would have just been, you know, not that there's anything wrong with just being an art teacher forever and retiring in one place. People do that and God love them. I don't know how, <laughs> I don't know how you can, you can do it. Cause the kids, I love them with all my heart, but, um, but yeah, just, you know, it takes a special place in heaven for those people. And now it's like, I have these opportunities to yes, be an art teacher. I'm still an art teacher in many ways, but in different way and joy, freedom, energized dreams, a path. Um, all these things now that I feel when I think about that moment in time when I thought I was going to be totally stuck. So now I want you to write your new story. So write down those things that you feel, or maybe you're still in your story, write the way you want to feel. I'm gonna yeah, because I think a lot of people right now are going, yeah, but Heidi, you're on the other side right now, and I'm in the middle of it. So um, what, what do you find is helpful for the person that's like in these strong emotions and like in the story and in the, the disappointment right now for getting them into that, that place of, okay, here's what I want the new story to be. Yes. And like I said earlier, we're all in a new story at all the time, all the times, you know, there's things going on in my life right now that are stuff that's still not comfortable to share, you know? And so right now, everybody you look at is in their own story, what's going on in their lives. So I want you to write how you think you, what you would feel once you get through it. So let's say you're in, you know, a few years back, I was in a health story, a really bad health story. And so um, during that time, because I had went through this story, I was actually able to see, even though I was sick and sad and depressed, I was able to see there's a way out. There's a reason for all of this. There's something that's going to happen that's going to help somebody else. I think when you focus outward on what it's, even though we're in it and we're sad and depressed and it sucks like life sucks sometimes it just does i think focusing on one day you're going to be able to help somebody else with the same thing you know you're going to be able to be out there and talk to somebody at the right conversation or the right moment to use whatever you had to be put through or whatever you're going through is going to help serve somebody else i think that's the big thing and now that you know i know it sounds weird but now that i've gone through that craziness Every time I have these, even though they're majorly highly charged emotional things, you know, with the hole in my heart and the mini stroke they thought I had and my dad having a heart transplant. I mean, it was like a, a you know, shit storm of, of things coming at us all at once. And I'm not even 40 yet. And I remember going, even in all of that, even when I was sick in bed and my husband was, you know, trying to make me laugh by dancing in his underwear, even through all of that. I was like, there is a reason for this. There is a reason I'm going through all of this. And so I think, I know it's hard. Um, I know some of y'all are going through major struggles and there's some things that you're going through that I you know, don't understand and some things that are just horrific that I pray that you know, you're not going through and that I never have to go through because I know there's those things that are just unbearable. Um, but if this can offer any kind of relief for you, to know that maybe there's a way you can help somebody else. I think it's just healing to get it out and to just write it down. And even if you're not ready to write the positive yet and um, have it ready, because then you can use this as a symbol for once you do get through it, you know, this is why, you know, and it's almost like a constant reminder of, cause we have to every day wake up and choose to be grateful, even though sometimes we feel like there's nothing to be grateful for. Mm -hmm. And that is a constant, that's kind of like the motivation. It's like a, it's a practice, you know, you practice it and you practice it. And then one day you're like, Oh my gosh, you know, I'm grateful for that. And I didn't even have to think about it, you know? So I don't know. I just hope this helps some of y'all. I know it's really helped me and um, I hope you can use it as a tool. Great. So we go through and we write down new story and, and how we want to feel. And then can you just go through like what the, the next step would be then with the, with the yes. art? Awesome. Okay. So once you have it all written down, your old story and your new story of how you feel, mm -hmm. then once all of this is dry, then you're just going to take all of your, some people choose to write only their positive things. 
Some people choose to write the negative than the positive. So I have examples of both because when I teach this, I give people the option. So I usually give them a Sharpie pen to write the negative because I want that to be faint and in the background. So like mine is very faint and in the background for the negative. Mm -hmm. And then I usually give them a regular Sharpie to do the positive. So mm -hmm. all of the positive words are bold. All of the positive words are um, standing out more. And then the same thing here, I say this one, I chose to only do the positive. So the negative were all written on here, but then when I did my new story, I did all positive things. So love, energized, a path, free, dreams coming true, enjoy, laughter, fun, success, um, and then representing some of those major words, joy and free, um, because you can have really, really bad times, but still find joy, even though it seems really dark at that moment. And so, um, so yeah, so it just basically writing them on there with your Sharpie. And then I also recommend um, placing this somewhere, like maybe where you get ready in the morning, um, somewhere where, because again, you're going to wake up and you're going to tell yourself that same story. You're going to tell yourself the negative, every, you know, every day for a while. That's just what we do. It's just human nature. So what I want you to do is place this, whether you do a small canvas, this is like a you know, four by six, or whether you do a, a bigger canvas, I want you to place this like right where you have your makeup, where you're getting ready, mm. maybe you're having your coffee. And then when you start to go into your head, we all have this mental prison sometimes. When you start to go into your head, you can immediately look there and go, oh, wait, but this is what I want to start telling myself. Mm. And it does take some time. I'm not going to say you're going to do this and overnight start feeling like everything's okay. But I promise you, if you start to retrain your brain, start to look at the good things that could possibly happen at this, look at the things that you might be able to share, look like purposely for opportunities of how could I help, you know, this girl that just said something about that, you know, I'm on that path too, but this is what I've seen that's relieved some of that pain. And um, I think that's where the most power comes in. And honestly, guys, one last point. Um, I kept this secret for many years. I kept this a secret and I did not tell anybody. And it was actually whenever um, I met you, Nicole, that, that weekend that we were all together, I remember talking to one of the, there was only one or two guys there. And I, I was talking to him about it and he said, and I was a teacher at the time. And he said, he said, why do you think you sharing your story would because I, I was so worried about what my high schoolers that I was teaching would think. Mm. Like, am I going to destroy them? Am I going to think that everything's not okay? like, you know, I just didn't know what they would think. And I, I had this feeling of like, I might damage them some way. Right. You know, they look up to me as their art teacher and now I'm going to like explode all this, you know, bad knowledge or whatever. And so he goes, so what do you think? You think because of what you did, they're going to go become drug addicts. Like, do you think because of what you did, like you don't have that much power. And it hit me and I was like, you were so right. Like here I am bottling this up and holding it in thinking I have all this power on other people's lives. And I grant it, you know, I do agree that we can motivate people and we can help them. But at the end of the day, you know, it was more about like, what if you help a bunch of people by sharing this story? And the thing that really struck me is once I got over myself and once I started sharing about it and opening up, it has opened up a whole new freedom for me. It is not only like taken the shame off of me. It's almost like this big shame coat I've been wearing and I could take it off and I could be open, but you will not believe the people that just come up to me and tell me everything, you know, because I've told everything. And so I'm able to help and open up to all of these people that I've never would have. And my high schoolers, they didn't care. You know, they're, they're busy. <laughs> they're on social, they're, they're tweeting, whatever they're they do. High schoolers. <laughs> they're high schoolers, you know? And so I think just knowing like we can help people versus the embarrassment we feel, you know? Yeah. But I mean, what I love about this process is that it allows a safe and a very beautiful container to express it first and have it out there actually create art from it and then step into what you want because it all begins with us. Like 
how we show up to our audience is really about how we show up to ourselves. And so when you were able to show up to yourself and take off the shame coat and not feel ashamed anymore, then people were like, oh my God. And things have exploded for you. So, I mean, it's, it's proof of the pudding and you're doing work you love now, which is so wonderful and inspiring so many others to do the same. Which leads me to the very awesome free gift that you have for our audience today. Would you like to tell them about that? Yes. So I, okay. So when I first started doing paint parties, I thought it was honestly just about having some fun and making extra money. And that's really what it was. I was teaching full time and I was just making extra money so I could go to New York city and go to cool places, you know, all this stuff. And, and then I started getting emails and people pulling me aside, talking about the art healing part, you know, being around other people, you know, people would come to my parties by themselves and then they would leave with friends and then they would come again and meet those same friends. And so it became more about, you know, yes, it's a fun paint party and yes, we might have a few drinks and yes, it might be that, but then it became about more. And um, so for those of you that might be thinking, oh, it's a paint party girl, you know, she's not a serious artist. The stuff I do, I've never claimed to be like this massively awesome artist. I just know God instilled the love of paint for me. Like, give me a wall, give me a floor. You can see my floor and I will paint it. Right. And so now that I've done this and I, I make money at it, I love to show other people how you can do it. So maybe you're a fine artist or maybe you're somebody who's just crafty and you're like, man, I just need some extra bucks for Christmas, or I just need a way to make some money to pay my rent this month. You know, um, I think sometimes people think, you know, you want to do it, but you're not really sure how this free gift gives you not only the exact scripts, exact emails, exact phone calls, all of it, exactly how to find your customers. It walks you through what to do and who to contact and how to contact them. And um, I have a whole method of how I do it to where it gets results. And Yes, it gets results and not just with me, but over a hundred people that are in my paint party headquarters are using the same method with results all the time. So it's a video and a PDF. So if you'd rather watch me talk about it or you'd rather, you know, just read it either way, start using this immediately because right now is the time you can start booking some parties making some extra money, and then you just never know where it leads from there. I feel like my friend Jenny, she always says, you know, paint parties is the gateway to a creative life. It's like the, the, drug, the gateway drug to a creative life. And I feel it's so true because it just opens doors. So if you're a muralist or you're a fine artist, you can bring that stuff there and show people like, hey, I do commissions. Hey, mm -hmm. I do this. And you're opening yourself up to a whole new clientele where I know sometimes artists, they struggle with finding customers. You know, I'm like, bring your stuff and show it off, you know? While yeah. So this will help you get events and get things booked. Oh my gosh. Heidi, thank you so much. For our audience, if this is getting you jazzed and excited, make sure that you click on the link below to be able to download this literally done for you. <laughs> like if you don't know how to do it, she's going to show you how. Oh, that's so generous. And Heidi, what are other ways that our audience can connect with you? Oh, sure. Yeah, if you want to go to Facebook, um, Texas Art and Soul, T-E-X-A-S, and then A-R-T, and spelled out A-N-D, and then Soul, S-O-U-L. And you can find me at that same address for the website, texasartandsoul.com. Um, and then I'm trying to think, I do some Pinterest. I started a Pinterest thing, but really Facebook and my website's the best way. And you can message me if you have questions. Awesome. Well, Heidi, thank you so much for everything that you brought today here, helping us to release our old stories and write our new. For our audience, make sure you connect with Heidi. Click on the link below. Reach out to her on social, on our website, and uh, get your work out there. Heidi, thank you so much for your time. This is Nicole Peterman of ZenRed NYC. Thank you so much for being here on the Unstoppable Artist Formula. Keep an eyeball on your inbox for your next powerful training, and I'll see you there. Thank you so much, Heidi. Thank you all so much.